Hi, everybody. Welcome to Educator.com's Basic and Intermediate Adobe Photoshop Elements course. I'm Michael Brown, and I'm going to be your instructor in this course. In this in-depth Elements training course, I'm going to be teaching you all of the tools and features that Photoshop Elements has. But most importantly, I'm going to be teaching you the techniques of how to apply those tools and features to dramatically and flawlessly enhance your photographic images and create eye-catching graphics designs. Another cool thing about Elements, it has a wide variety of other cool stuff within it. Some things that you can do with a single click, others where you have templates that you fill in and massage and kick out some really cool graphics. A wonderful course. This training course applies primarily to Photoshop Elements 11, which is the interface that you're looking at right here, the latest version. We will be working totally in this interface. If you have Elements version 10, this course is equally good for you. There have been some changes in the interface, but the tools, techniques, and features are absolutely identical. The only difference in those are there are a couple of features that were added in version 11 that have been picked up from Photoshop CS6. Both will work. Primarily, we're working in Elements 11. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to learn Photoshop Elements, and I'm going to show you a start-to-finish demo and how to take an image from the camera and change it from good to great very easily and smoothly right here in Photoshop Elements to show you how this program works. Now, Elements, it's not a difficult to understand program. It is simply a pretty large program with lots of stuff in it. The key to learning Photoshop Elements is simplicity. Breaking this program down into easy to understand basic pieces. And in addition to that, I'm going to be showing you how to integrate those pieces together to make a quick, efficient, flawless, and smooth workflow. So everything you do goes easily and the results are great. That's what this course is all about. We're going to start by talking for a moment about the big question that people have, Photoshop Elements or Photoshop. Without question, Photoshop is the bomb, the big dog. It has everything you would ever want for image enhancement, for graphics, and for art. However, Photoshop Elements can do almost anything that Photoshop can for enhancing and retouch Im retouching images. 95% of Photoshop is right here in Photoshop Elements. Your exposure and color corrections, same tools. Creating and modified selections. There's only one tool that Photoshop has that's different from this, and it creates vector selections. Other than that, we have the same thing. Elements has a selection tool that Photoshop doesn't have that allows you to easily create selections, too. So it's an even balance there. Retouching, same tools, same methods. And combining images to create composites and panoramas over here in the Layers panel, and we have adjustment layers, pretty much similar to Photoshop. Photoshop does have a little more uh, precision tools and some slight expanded variations in some of the features, but predominantly everything that Photoshop has, Photoshop Elements has, and you can do anything that Photoshop can do right here in Elements. Elements also has several features that Photoshop doesn't have at all. You can create a whole range of photo effects with one button instantly. Elements, uh, Photoshop doesn't have that. You can do sepia tones, Lomo effect, an in vogue photo effect, line art, vignettes, the Orton effect, another in vogue effect, pop art, and more. Simply with one click right here. Elements has it. Photoshop doesn't. You can create greeting cards, photo books, collages, calendars, and more with Elements right in it. The templates are there. Very simple. Just generate some really cool stuff. Photoshop doesn't have that either. Share your images through direct uploads to a whole host of online media sites. Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, SmugMug, and more right from within this program. Elements is very user-friendly in its layout with a newly designed interface. Notice right here on the left, just for example, this is your toolbox. 
They are now grouped into the tools that you use for the various categories, viewing, selecting, enhancing, drawing, and modifying, as opposed to just listing them. Easier to access and understand where you need to go. The whole idea in Elements is to make things simple. A wonderful program. Elements 11 has also incorporated some great new features from Photoshop CS6. When CS6 came out, some of the features were incorporated right here into Elements so that you've got almost, again, everything that Photoshop has. Again, Photoshop is the professional level version. It has expanded and more precision tools and features, but Elements is absolutely amazing. Photoshop Elements is a fantastic program for image enhancement and graphic design for beginning and intermediate use. Once you're fluent with Elements, if you ever decide you need the additional features or more precise controls of Photoshop, the interface, the tools, and the methods are almost identical, so the transition would be perfectly seamless. This is a great program. I cannot overemphasize that. Now, Photoshop Elements is actually three separate programs in one. We have the Organizer, which is for editing, sorting, and rating your images. You bring them into the program from outside sources, from folders, or from the camera. Organizer is accessible right here by clicking on this button, and it will open the program. Just takes a couple of seconds, and there it is. There is, we're going to go... Whoop, back to organizer again. I kicked the button. Japanese garden. Here we have images. There's albums, folders, sorting, rating, finding your best pictures. You do it right in here. Very easy. I'll show you when we do the sample. Back to editor. Camera Raw is another program contained within Elements for use only with raw files. If you're shooting JPEG or shoot TIFF, they'll come directly into editor. But if you shoot raw, They'll open up in Camera Raw. I'll show you that um, in a minute. Let me just double check. I want to see something here. Yep, we have raw files. Images come in here, and you can make the raw files, and you can make preliminary non-destructive image adjustments to raw files. Doesn't alter any pixels. Allows you to give it a nice head start. They're saved as mathematical algorithms. They do not affect the pixels, so it does not... De um, there's no degradation of an image whatsoever, and if you ever want to go back and change those settings, you can do so. And the third part, the third program, is the editor, where you do your primary creative work. That's right here. So all together, you have these three, and they integrate to provide a quick, efficient, and flawless, smooth workflow. All that you will need to do, almost anything you want, to any image can be broken down into four simple categories. What I want to do here for you is make Photoshop Elements simple. The four categories are corrections, and these are primarily, primarily exposure and color. Very simple tools, very simple to do. Corrections are simple to learn. Selections. This is the most important category and feature within either Photoshop or elements. Selections allow you to isolate areas for specific adjustments. Adjustments in retouch can be done overall very easily. Once you learn the tools and the functions, away you go. If you want to isolate areas and bring up something or isolate a specific area for change, you have to select it. And it isn't just the selection itself. It's the edging and how well the adjustment that you make blends in so that you have absolutely no evidence that you worked on that image. This is very important, and I really stress teaching this. You'll be learning a lot about selections. You'll be, become very fluent. Selections apply to corrections, because if you want to correct a specific area, you have to select it. Retouching. Retouching tools are simple. The techniques need to be learned. I'm going to be teaching you all of the various techniques for retouching. And again, if you want to retouch a specific area and protect another part of the image, you're going to need to make a selection. So all three of these go together. Fourth cate category is manipulation. Sizing images, um, distorting parts of an image, combining parts. All of this is physical manipulation. Altogether, these four categories are 
everything you need to know about Photoshop elements and working on a photographic image. Okay, let's work on an image. I'm going to show you how this program works. So let's go to Organizer. Here I've got an album I made and from a folder that I imported. All these images were a Japanese garden here in Los Angeles. And I'm just going to scroll down and pick where was the image I was looking for before. I think it may be. Let's go album order. This one right here. Let's take a look at it. There's the image that I want to work on. So all I have to do is I'll bring it back down. I'm going to rate this five stars so I can remember that. And there it is. It's highlighted. Now we're going to open it up in Photoshop Elements. I click the editor button. And the image, since it's a raw file, opens up in Camera Raw. Here you have Camera Raw. You have all of these sliders. You have a sharpening and noise reduction panel and some camera controls. We're going to start off. We've got washed out highlights, so we're going to pull the highlights down. Look at that. Just with that slider alone, the sky has become just the way we want it. We open up the shadows a little bit, not maybe that much. Um, I'm going to now watch the image pop when I, this is kind of a sharpening. Look at the difference right there. There's where it was, and there's where it is. Just snap that image, and it looks great. I think that we're going to pop the saturation just a little bit. And there, all these preliminary adjustments will stay with the image in mathematical um, representation. We're ready to go. So let's open the image right here in Elements. So I look at the image, and the first thing I see that I want to work on is I would like to remove this tower. So this is a little retouch. We're going to take a retouching tool called the Clone Tool. And what I'm going to do is just source and paint, and we'll just clone away this obstruction in the image. Just as easy as that. Like I told you, these tools are fairly simple. It's the way you apply them. Now, I'm going in a hurry here. I would probably... In fact, I will just go ahead and show you. You see the edge here? I'm going to take a selection tool and I'm going to apply it right here. And I've now made a selection, which you will see are these crawling ants. And what that has done, everything inside that is active, everything outside it's not. So when I go back to use my clone tool, watch, I won't be affecting the edge of the building. Notice that everything I do now, even though I come down, it protected it. That's the value of a selection right there. So in short order, we removed the offending obstruction. I see one more that can we remove. We might as well go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to take out this light pole. So now we've got the tool, and we'll just paint it out. You have to do a little cloning from different spots so that it becomes flawless. There we go. I could probably take one more out right here. And there. In almost no time at all, we've removed any of the physical evidence around there. That looks pretty good. Now, I look at this image and I go, it's a little bright on the building and a little dark in the foreground. So let's make another selection. I'm going to pick a selection tool. This is the selection brush. This tool doesn't even appear in Photoshop. It has a different kind of a version. But right here, what we're going to do is we're just going to paint on the building. And there we go. And it has a very soft edge on this brush so that if I go over a little bit, 
it isn't going to be a problem because it will blend. Remember I told you that's the whole idea is to blend things. So there I've got that pretty much. And we're going to make a selection out of it. I'm going to invert it. And I'm going to save it. Always save a selection. I'm going to call it uh, Roof and click OK. And now we're going to deselect it for a moment, copy my background layer, and reload that selection. And there it is, the Roof selection. I'm going to make an adjustment of exposure. Now watch what happens as I snap the contrast and bring the roof down a little bit. Notice we get a lot more detail. Looks pretty good. You can turn the adjustment off. There it was bright. Now it came down. It looks pretty good. Take this and we take a look. That's where it was. That's where it is. All right. Now the only thing I'd like to do is bring up the water. So once again, I'm going to use this brush. And I'm going to take that down. I want to make a mask. Bring this up, and this is very quick. I'm just going to paint over the dark areas that I'd like to open up very quickly. And you can see what you're doing because it puts this overlay on it that you can actually see what's happening and correct. If I make a mistake like that, all I have to do is paint it away. So you paint and paint away, and that's it. So there we have that. Now we're going to go to the selection. Invert it, so we've got that. And now I'm going to make an adjustment of exposure again for just that area. It'll be isolated. See up in the little thumbnail? So now I want to open it up. So see how we brighten it? Just that right there. We'll brighten it up. Snap the contrast just a little bit. And we went from there to there. And everything is bright. Now the only thing left to do on this image, as far as I can see, is overall saturation. So we're going to make one more adjustment, uh, and this one is going to be for hue saturation, and we're going to simply bump the color saturation up, and I'll turn that off and on, and I'm going to very quickly show you here's where the image was when we brought it in, and we had adjusted this from a very, um, the original image was pretty washed out, and now we've taken it from there to there in very simple steps with a color change, a couple of exposure changes, remember we talked about corrections, a little bit of retouch, and selections all right here in Photoshop Elements. Very quickly, very easily, very smoothly. That's how this program works. So, what I would like to do now is close this lesson. A very important axiom applies, not only here with Photoshop Elements, but in anything you do. If you don't use it, you will lose it. In this case, you study the lessons, practice, practice, practice. Don't just do a lesson once and forget about it and come back later because you won't remember what you've done and you will have wasted your time. Study the lessons, go over them again if you need to, practice. The files that I will work on for you are with each lesson so that you can do that and continue to use it. So come and join me in a fascinating and fun journey of learning that will dramatically expand your artistic vision and creativity forever with Photoshop Elements 11. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.